Hope everybody's doing well. It's good to see you. Um, before we get started with, you know, the wrap up of camp and the UC Davis prep, I just want to uh, let our NFL. I was thinking about this. I saw Brock got hurt the other night and traded a message with him. And um, you forget how stressful it is for these guys who are trying to make rosters and and um, be going through the first round of cuts here at the NFL level. So all our guys up there, obviously some guys, Batonio and and Cap have nothing to worry about, but we have other guys that are fighting to make rosters, and we're cheering for them, and we hope it goes well. And you know, Brock's injury is uh, seems to be a pretty significant one, and we wish him a speedy recovery so he can continue to uh, to chase this thing. Um, so we we wrapped up camp uh, last week. It was a little unusual this year in the sense that um, we had a full week of school before we ended up in a game week. Um, which hadn't happened around here in the first two years that I was here. It was always the first week of school. We were in game prep, so uh, that was a little unusual. Um, we practiced last week on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Players day off was Friday, and then we were in um, Saturday began a, a typical Monday schedule. So. It's been a little bit of that this week, you know. It, it's Sunday, but it's really Tuesday. You know, today's Monday, but it's really Wednesday. So we've been uh, pushing through that a little bit. We kept the morning schedule on Saturday and Sunday, so we had the players in at 6:30 in the morning, um, both days, because with the new schedule, we just felt like it was important to get everybody into a groove and not not to change things up at the beginning. So um, we are in pretty good health right now. Uh, there is nobody who should be in the two deep that is unavailable for the game uh, on Thursday night. We've got some guys that are working them working themselves back from little dings. Uh, Jordan Dobrich suffered a sprained ankle in our last scrimmage of, of training camp, but he's practiced the last two days at full go. Um, we uh, we've had just some nicks and bruises, but nothing serious and. I anticipate that this will be as healthy as we will be the entire year. Everybody's up and, and ready to roll. Um, first games, so we're, you know, the biggest fear in a first game is, is A, you know, you st you, we've studied all of Davis's film from last year, but they've studied all of ours, and there's probably going to be a wrinkle or two that either team didn't see in the, in the film study, and the story of first games is, how quickly can you adjust? It is the things that you take for granted. Uh, quarterback uh, exchange with the tailback, catching punts, you know, kind of making those routine plays flawlessly. We need to try and do that. Uh, and then we have a bunch of youngsters that this will be their first live college experience and, and makes you wish there was a preseason game. But uh, this is not. It's the first one, and it counts. Uh, Davis coming in, um, you know, we've said this before, the last two years we've had an FCS opponent and we preach to the team, you know, don't don't be that team that looks past the FCS opponent because every year they're they're reaching up and they're grabbing somebody. And uh, I think I think I saw in thirteen I was doing again doing a little research and I think eight FCS teams won opening weekend in two thousand thirteen, I believe it was. And that's a staggering number, eight, eight FCS teams beating FBS opponents in one weekend. And we've got to make sure that we don't uh, get complacent. We don't look past them. Obviously, we have two huge names in the weeks following the Davis game, but our sole focus has been on the Aggies. Um, two and nine last year, but I think it's a little bit deceiving. The last month of the season, they were much, much more competitive as they made a change at quarterback and it kind of ignited their offense. Um, Coach Gould and I are both entering our third years, so I would expect that they're going to be improved as they've had their program in place now for a couple of years. Uh, so we're really not taking anything for granted. Um, I will say this, despite the record, I felt watching the film, I appreciated the, the job that the coaches did. And, the character that their players showed because they really, really played hard all the way through the end of the year, physical. Um, offensively, 
they present some challenges just because they're a little bit different. Um, they are going to play with a fullback, which we don't see very often. Uh, they are going to play with multiple personnel groupings. Uh, you are going to most likely see a ton of shifts, motions, unbalanced, where they try to create an advantage through, through pre-snap movement in their formations. Uh, that is something that I am concerned about because we are young at the safety position, and often when a formation changes strength, the formation, or excuse me, the, uh, the safeties are the ones that need to recognize and, and adjust accordingly. Um, you know, the average fan says, what's the big deal? They, they play with a tight end and a fullback. The reality of it is we don't see that very often. Um, they're kind of modeled like you would think Stanford offensively, where you're going to see two tight ends, a fullback, a tailback, and only one wide receiver on the field. It's highly unusual for us to see t what we would call 22 personnel very often. And it does change your run fits, and it, it forces you to now bring safeties and corners into the run fits. Uh, they're going to run a lot of gap schemes, power, counter, uh, they're pretty good at the zone stuff, and a lot of their chunk plays in the passing game uh, come off of play action because they, they're dedicated to running the ball, and then that sets up the play action. Uh, the quarterback, Ben Scott, is a junior now. He was inserted into the lineup at the end of last year as a sophomore, and like I said, their, their production, the minute he, he jumped in, uh, got better significantly. Uh, they have a receiver, Ramon Vargas, number 80, who is, uh, is to Scott what Wimberley was to, um, to Cody in, in the 13 year. If it gets hairy, the ball's going to number 80. And, and they move him all over the formation and try to do different things with him. And he's a very, he's a very talented player and he's got incredible ball skills. So uh, they have some guys that, that we have to be aware of. Defensively, they're a 4-3. Physically tough, their coordinator uh, has worked his way up through the high schools, uh, all the way up to a quality control job with the Denver Broncos when they hired him. You can see some pro 4-3 influence, and you can see some pro 4-3 influence in the, in the sense that they do a really good job of having a pressure or two designed per week. That you only see it against that opponent, and it doesn't show up again. And it usually is um, is pretty effective. Um, I'm concerned about the pressure. I'm concerned about handling it. I don't know if you remember, but in 13, this is the team that that uh, hit Cody in the first half. Uh, he finished the game, but ended up missing a couple of weeks with a knee injury. It was a it was an exotic pressure where where they. Uh, ended up looping a linebacker up through the A gap. We we cut block him. He dove over us and went right into Cody's knee. So um, I expect they'll have some exotic stuff designed for us, and we are kind of going up about our preparation as if we're going to see a lot of pressure. Personnel wise, they have two really stout defensive tackles. They're not very tall. They're both probably five eleven, but uh, uh, Devon and um, Reka de Roca, I'm probably saying that wrong. So if he gets mad at me, please, I apologize. I think you're a good player. I just can't say your last name. Uh, he is a, uh, the two defensive tackles are stout. And uh, then they have a safety, Zach Jones, 44, who I think is a really good player. Frankly, I think he could play in the Mountain West. Uh, he's a lot of, they have guys that could play in the Mountain West. There's no doubt about it. He jumps off the tape, though. I mean, he's really active all over the field, makes, makes plays in the run game, very physical, flies around. He's on their kickoff team, nearly impossible to block. So they, they have some guys that off of last year's film uh, have our attention. Uh, our preparation has been earnest, it's been sincere, and, and it's been, um, you know, we've been getting after it pretty good. We're excited to start the season, excited to get going, uh, get into the rhythm of a season, and, um, you know, this is this is the first challenge of, of the, the the 2015 year, and we're excited to go. So, with that, I'll take any questions. Coach, can you speak to the advantages of opening up with an FCS team versus a Power Five school side? We know you're not overlooking them, but just the advantages of that. 
I guess the one advantage is that in theory, um, they will physically match up better with us than say if we went and opened at USC, for example, where there would be speed and size that you may not match up with, at least in the opening game, you are going to play a team that will physically look like you do. Uh, it's a first game though, so I mean, it is what it is. Uh, look, I'm not complaining. I would rather open up with Davis at home than open up at UCLA on the road against a ranked opponent like we did a couple of years ago. Um, but it, it does give us a chance to, uh, you know, to compete against a team that will probably look, you know, more like us as opposed to the other way around. Obviously, every first game is important, but I mean, when you consider the teams coming up on your schedule, Arizona, Texas A&M, how important is this game to, to get a win? So. I, I, I don't look at it in that framework. I mean, you can't say, boy, this is more important because we're, we, we follow it with the other two. We don't even think about the other two. The only thing we're thinking about right now is UC Davis. We go into every game trying to win it. We don't go into any game trying to keep it close or trying to make it look respectable. The outcome's the outcome. I mean, some t there have been times, especially in the first year against Florida State, I mean, we got blown out. We got blown out by the national champion. We didn't go there trying to keep it close. Uh, you know, so we're focused solely on this opponent. It's important to win because we're trying to win. It's important for to get the win because we try to win every game that we play. That's why it's important. Um, it's important to show that we've progressed from the start of training camp to to uh, where we are now. It's important to um, be productive against another opponent under the lights with officials out there to make sure that w w we can handle uh, the game now because we've been banging on each other for about three and a half weeks. You've talked about some of the FCS upsets in recent years. And, you know, certainly you don't want you never overlook anybody. But do you think with all those extra upsets, I mean, do you think the players really get at this point you can't overlook anybody even more so just because you've seen all those upsets? Before? I can't speak for their mindset in particular. Uh, you know, I can't tell you what they're thinking. I can tell you that we're trying to pound that message into them, that we, we overlook nobody. And when you look back to last year, I believe that the final score against Southern Utah was actually closer than the final score against Washington State. I mean, that's, that's an FCS opponent that had been okay the year before that gave us fits. And then the following week, we were able to, I, you know, I guess you would call it upset a, a Pac-12 opponent. So f first games are their own separate entity. And, and I, I can't imagine that we're looking past anybody. You were talking about how they are you know, designed to kind of run the football, UC Davis. Do you see your defense at this point being uh, suited better for stopping the run versus stopping the pass? Well, you, I guess if you wanted to make that leap because our experience in the front seven is, is so much greater than it is in the back end, I, I guess I could understand that leap. Um, we make a concerted effort to run the ball here and then you know, that's what our defense sees all spring and the vast majority of training camp. So I don't think, you know, seeing an opponent that is dedicated to running the ball is going is, is gonna to cause issues. But, you know, formations, shifts, motions, personnel groups could cause some issues. But the thought of a team trying to get up there and establish the run, I don't think should be that big a deal for us. I think we should be prepared to deal with that mindset. It's all the other stuff we've got to make sure we're prepared to handle. Aside from his freshman year when he started as Tyler Stewart's debut as a starting quarterback, what does he bring that's different than what people saw with Cody Bedard in the last four years? One win as a starter? I mean, no, I, the, he's not making his debut. He has made his debut. He's 1-0 as a starter in the Mountain West Conference, and that counts for something. Um, what does he bring that, that uh, Cody did not? Um, uh, two inches taller? Um, he, he throws a really nice long ball. Uh, he is not going to run away from defenders like Cody did. I mean, Cody and Cap were special and are special. Um, so to hold any, I mean, look, I mean, this is not whoever the quarterback is to, to, to talk about them in relation to Colin Kaepernick and Cody Fajardo, the only two quarterbacks in FBS history to go 9,000, 3,000. That, that's not fair to whoever filled this job. I mean, so yeah, he's going to do some things differently, but 
I think the identity of the offense is not going to change. I mean, we're, we're going to still do what we do. And if he pulls it and makes 15, we're not going to be disappointed because he didn't run away from the whole defense. We're going to say, OK, move the chains, and, and let's go call the next play. In a perfect world, what would you like to see from your offense in this first game? What's the kind of marking stick to say that was a, a success for us? I would like to see ball security. I want to not turn it over, which we did do last year against Southern Utah. I would like to, to see uh, us make routine plays flawlessly. I don't want to drop the ball. I don't want to get false starts, the, those silly mistakes that we can prevent. And I'd like to see drives end in touchdowns, not field goals. There's no magic number that we're looking towards in, in, in terms of how many points we're going to score or, or how many we hope to score. Look, we're trying to win the game. I mean, this is not a scrimmage. I mean, this is an opponent that's improving, that has good players. and. And we're going out to, you know, play the best we can and try and win the game. Players pretty anxious to get out there. I think so. I think so. I think the, uh, I think last week we kind of dealt with the adjustment to the new schedule, of of guys having to get to bed by ten ten thirty, um, which at my age is not a problem. My wife keeps laughing because I'm asleep on the couch at nine forty five, but. Uh, you know, we're in the building at about 5.15 in the morning. They're in the building at about 6.30. And last week, I saw guys trying to get used to that, uh, guys trying to get used to going to class all afternoon, as opposed to knocking them out in the morning and coming over to the building. Uh, this week, I've seen um, the urgency, the speed, all that stuff has gone up a notch. I see bodies that, faces that don't look as tired as they did last week, kind of like they're getting used to it now. And, and uh, you know, I think they're anxious to play a game. At least I hope they are. I know I am. So. The plan is just still to play Tyler and not knock out Morgan Hunter? No, I'm not. I'm, we're just going to see how it goes. I mean, if the, if the opportunity presents itself, I'm not afraid to do it. But I'm not going to force the issue either. Look, if, if we were talking about quarterback A and quarterback B, and it wasn't Tyler and it wasn't Hunter, Whenever you had the chance to get your number two in the game to get him some live reps, you do it. So this is not a matter of Hunter versus Tyler versus Hunter. This is a matter of if we ever get in a position anywhere during the season where we're up by a bunch or down by a bunch and the number two can get some experience, you want him to do that. No different than what we did last year when, when Tyler and Devin Combs would get into a game. You know, experience is valuable, but I'm certainly not going in with a plan that, hey, on the third series, this guy's going in. That's, that's not how it's working. So. Every team wants an identity. I think you want your identity to you want to be running the ball. And yes. I mean, is the first week we see the identity start to unfold? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, you know, we have two good tailbacks that we, we feel really good about. We have an offensive line now that is not, you know, starting three redshirt freshmen like it was last year. Uh, we, now we're redshirt sophomores. We're really old now. But, um, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, offensively, we want to run the ball. And we want to uh, try to play a physical style of football. And we want to try and take advantage of play action and get some chunk plays in the passing game. And, you know, Thursday night's our first chance to try and put that into practice. To, for me, the front seven, in my opinion, you know, the front seven need to carry the carry the the weight for a little while because, you know, Asani Rufus and Kendall Johnson, although Kendall's played at corner as our safeties, and then you know, Aki Muhammad, and then either Randy Uzoma or um, Elijah Mitchell back there at corners. We don't have a lot of games started uh, back there in the defensive backfield, so uh, you know. Our front seven's going to have to be aggressive, play fast, and, and try to alleviate as much pressure off that back end because you look at our front seven and we have multiple players that have started a bunch of games and have game experience, and they've all had good camps, so now it's time to go. You guys were pretty good on the road last year, but at home, um, maybe not so strong. Though. I think the fact that we played Boise and Colorado State at home might have had something to do with that. One won the Fiesta Bowl, the other one was a 10 win team. <laughs> But, I mean, is that you want to defend home field? Is no that doubt. Who comes in? I mean, is that something that, that is a goal this year, is that, you know, whoever comes into our building, they're going to be just 
Yeah, there's no doubt. But I mean, yeah, I mean, last year the theme was you guys haven't, you know, you you coach Pauline haven't won on the road. They haven't played well on the road. That's the hump you get over. So then we go out and we win a bunch of games on the road. Now, you know, we 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 failed to uh, we failed to beat two really quality teams in Boise and Colorado State. We laid an egg against Fresno. So now. You know, it's back to you got to you got to defend the home turf. Look, we're trying to win every game we play, whether it's home or on the road. You know, this is our first opportunity. It's at home. Hopefully we have a great crowd this. You know, last year I was told, you know, don't play on Saturday of Labor Day weekend because everybody heads to the lake. Well, we moved it to Thursday because everybody said don't play on Saturday. You know, there's no smoke in the air. It's a 730. It's a seven o'clock start. I'm really hopeful that we can have a nice crowd for the opener. Because, look, I mean, people told us, here's what we like, here's what we don't like, and we tried. So hopefully we'll have a good crowd out here to support our guys. So part of the reason you guys are playing early, um, in addition to the preparation for the second week, is hopefully the attendance is a little bit higher. Yeah, I mean, people told us last year, playing on Saturday of later Labor Day weekend is tough. Everybody, it's a holiday weekend. So we figured maybe we could play on Thursday night and get everybody to play hooky on Friday. They can start their holiday weekend early. Um, you know, that's part of it. It was part of the thinking. The other part was when we saw that Arizona was playing on Thursday night. Um, we wanted to be on equal footing in terms of preparation, which we were not last year with, with Wazoo. They opened on a Thursday. We opened on a Saturday. So all I know is it's got my schedule way screwed up because I think it's Wednesday right now. So is that it? Anything else for Coach? All right. Thanks, guys. Mindset of not looking past UC Davis because they're an FCS team, whatever. Has that been even a discussion amongst the guys and the team, like in the locker room this week? Uh, definitely has to, um, especially when playing an FCS opponent. Um, they have nothing to lose. They want to upset us. They want to put us on the headlines. As you know, Nevada takes a loss by UC Davis, so we definitely can't look past them. We can't look past any any opponent, but. Um, we, we, we take them on with the same level of, of importance as uh, A&M or Arizona, Buffalo. It's no different, so. How excited are you guys just to get out there and, and, and play somebody else? Very excited, man. Uh, we've been going at each other for, what, three months now, spring and then fall camp. So, you know, we're eager to see another opponent and just go to war. So, pretty excited. Obviously, you're not looking past them, but what are the advantages of opening up with an FCS opponent versus, say, a power five? Um, I would say you can work out some of the kinks. Um, some mistakes playing in FCS school aren't as crucial when playing a Division I a BCS opponent. So, uh, you know, we'll see what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are opening up, and then uh, we'll have to definitely make a crucial turnover in fixing those and get it ready for the schedule down the road. Opening the season on a Thursday night at home under the lights. I mean, what do you expect the atmosphere to be like at, at Mackie? Uh, definitely, it's it's, it's going to be a that's the prime prime day of the week. You know, Thursday night, no class in the morning on Friday for most students. So we'll we'll get a big turnout, a lot of energy. Um, I'm excited to see how that goes. But you know, our team will will be ready. We'll be very excited. Uh, you know, there aren't too many Thursday games in college football. So being that we are, you know, one of the few, that brings a lot of attention to us and, you know, a lot of excitement. Obviously, every game is important, but, you know, opening the season at home, how big is it for you guys to, to get a win and, and just get off on the right foot this year? As you said, it, it, it'll get us off on the right foot. Um, you know, a loss wouldn't help at all, especially against the FCS. But we just have to come out with energy and, uh, you know, Keep our foot on the gas, really, and that's that's the biggest thing. We we go out there, 
and we keep piling the points on, we keep shutting them down on defense, and you know, just don't stop, don't let up. How much you looking forward to getting that first hit on somebody in a different color? That's that's the biggest that's the biggest thing out there right now. Um, I'll be on special teams, I'll be on kickoff, so hopefully we get we get the 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 coin toss in our favor. We kick off and be able to get that that first shot. I'm not sure how much film you've watched or, or what you know about uh, Davis, but, but from what you do know, what you know, what are you looking for from them? What what challenges can they present? They want to challenge challenge us with the run, uh, run, 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 and then try to lull us to sleep with the run, and then run play action. So we have to be disciplined in the back, you know, five, and uh, communicate with each other uh, before the play. Uh, Trust our keys. They do a lot of uh, play action, as I said before. But you know they'll they'll run the ball down your throat and then uh, try to get one over the top on you. How much has gone going against your offense and, and Don Jackson and Butler and the, and the Nevada running game? How does it help prepare you to to play a team that wants to try and run the football? Uh, immensely. We got two great running backs, as you said, uh, Don and JB. These guys look to cut back more. So, uh, you know, we have to uh, stay assignment sound and gap sound, and, you know, we'll shut them down. Anything else for Brian? All right, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Um, the first game is the first game, uh, no matter how you put it. Uh, there's going to be mistakes made. Um, an FCS opponent is just, uh, you probably won't get exposed as bad with those mistakes. But I mean, we opened up at Cal a couple years ago and made no difference. And how much are you looking forward to getting that first hit on somebody in a different color? I'm looking forward to it. Um, It'd be great. We don't really get to hit our quarterbacks a lot, so it'd be good to be able to punish a couple quarterbacks. Is there any sack dance plan? No, not yet. Yeah. Got to get there first. How much do you want the D line and the front seven to be really the identity of this football team? I mean, do you want to kind of set the tone with yeah. the team with your play? Yeah, we have to set the tone. Um, we're the most experienced group, and uh, the front seven. The front seven um, as a whole is the most experienced group on the team. So, yeah, we have to set the tone. We have to uh, come out, bring the juice, and just show the other guys how we're going to play football this year. How talented is this, this group of front seven that you get to play with? Uh, pretty good. Um, you know, action's got to speak. But uh, on paper and in practice, we're pretty good. So Thursday night, Saturday nights, we got to show that. What's it going to be like? I mean, it's you know Thursday night, first game of the season at home. Uh, hope is packed. Um, Thursday night, Mackey, uh, it, sh it should be exciting. Uh, hope all the fans come out and want to see us play and enjoy us play. And uh, hopefully we dominate and give them something to cheer about. Are you excited for the challenge of playing somebody that wants to run the football? Yeah. Uh, we got to stop the run. That's been one of our weaker points. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's, it's pretty good to start the season off with a team like that and then uh, stop the run, make them pass, and get after the quarterback. Anything else? What's up, y'all? Don, what's been the, the talk in the locker room about just get playing this UC Davis team and, and making sure to give them respect? You can never look over uh, any opponent. I mean, that's just how we go in any game. There uh, hasn't been really too much talk about it, at least you know on the offense end. You know, We just know we have to go out and do what we've been practicing. So uh, as far as looking anybody over, we haven't done that. I don't think so. What do you think the 
uh, evaluation of the offense this week? I mean, what are you hoping to see from this offense on Thursday? How, how do you how will you measure that it was a success? I want to see us run the ball. That's for sure. I feel like that's that's one important thing on this offense at this point. Uh, I want to see us be able to run the ball. Uh, I want to see us just flying around on offense. And I want to see how Tyler's going to do first game. So, I mean, we plan on, we are giving him our 100% effort to help him out, you know, this being his first start in a while. So I'm, I'm excited to see how he does. I think he's going to do great. What have you seen different in him in the last week since he's been named the starting quarterback? Have you seen any kind of change in his demeanor or confidence level or anything like that? His confidence level is actually, it's, it's, it's went up a lot. Um, and now he kind of has a sense where he can say something on offense now. And uh, he's leading guys, and it's, it's good to see. What are people going to see on the field from Tyler? I mean, you've played behind Cody for two years, and you've worked a lot with Tyler. So, I mean, what, what does he do that's maybe better than what Cody does? I can't necessarily speak on what he does better for Cody. I mean, I mean better than Cody. I mean, I'm not really sure about that. I haven't seen him in a game in a while. Um, I know what Cody did. He did a lot of great things back there. And I think at this point, all Tyler's trying to do is, you know, to step in and if not do better, you know, do the same. How excited are you? I mean, it, it feels like this offseason has just gone on forever. How excited is it to finally uh, play a game? I was just talking about it with my guys. It was seven, seven long, eight months of hitting each other and, and conditioning drills and all that, and I'm getting tired of that. So. I'm just happy to finally be back in things, and everybody's excited to go hit somebody else. That's what everybody's excited about, to go hit somebody else. Hoping the season at home on a Thursday night, I mean, what do you think the atmosphere is going to be like out there? I'm hoping the atmosphere is incredible. I'm hoping it's packed. Um, being Thursday, I guess that's different for Mackey. I mean, we haven't had that in a while. So, I mean, I'm excited to see the packed faithful come out, everybody come out, and I hope it's loud. Yeah, and, and and in those games we just feel like it's important that we understand we got to finish. You know, all those games I think at some point we were leading in the game or close to having an opportunity to win it. So that we focus, we're focusing more on let more on finishing games and winning those games that we have the opportunity to, rather than just winning at home. Like we feel, we feel like it's important that you know we could be in a great position at the end of the year if we can just finish games. With that in mind, I mean, how important is it opening the season? No, it definitely makes the fans happy. Uh, it'll make Mackey happy. It'll make everybody around us happy. And we've been, we've had good momentum to this point in the locker room. And I feel like it's going to just keep going higher and higher if we get that first W. Any else? Uh, going against guys like Lenny Jones, Rakeem Hayes, Ian Day, do you feel like any defensive line should be able to stop you guys? Um, we've had we've had great work. I can say that for sure. I mean, we've been hit hard a couple of times by our awesome D-line. So I feel like, um, you know, going against those guys for seven seven months to this point, I feel like it's not too many defensive lines going to be better. Thank you, Doug. Of course. <laughs> Rakeem Yates. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Tuesdays, obviously, uh, like last year, we'll do these down here.